Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. It is a, such a beautiful day. What a incredible! I don't know when the uh, the people on the video are tuning in, but I, if it's not on Sunday, I hope they're receiving as gorgeous a day, bright, sunny, uh, and in fact, even going to get to be warm. So what a good day to come together! And uh, you know what? We can rejoice because whether the light is shining outside or not, the light of Christ is shining in this place. And so I pray that the Lord will shine His light upon you as we come into this place today. And it's All Saints Sunday. You may notice sometimes the colors change. Uh, that's a sign that we are celebrating in perhaps a different way on a particular day. And so this day we give thanks uh, for the saints who have gone before us and for the saints who are around us. And uh, what a gift it is that we are able to come together in this way and to, uh, even if we can't see the full face uh, of the saints uh, in front, behind, or around us, we rejoice because we give thanks that we are a family of God. And I think we'll hear a little bit about that in our uh, readings today. I would invite you, as you have come into this place, and those who are tuned in via the internet, to now take a moment to be still before the Lord, prepare your heart, and we will gather for worship. Family of God, we gather for worship today as we live our lives in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we might perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will always forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's claim that promise as we come honestly and openly to God in confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Children of God, hear and believe the good news of the gospel today. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is fading away and the new one is coming to be more and more. And so know that you are forgiven today and that you are held in the love of God. Because we know that in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by His authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us proclaim our identity as we sing together, children of the Heavenly Father. Oh 
our congregation made a decision a little while ago that if you would like to sing softly and are wearing a mask, that is permitted. Our government does not uh, prohibit that. Uh, but uh, if you feel uncomfortable with that, just let those words rest in your heart uh, and uh, may you be blessed as we join in the gift of music. Brothers and sisters, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us join together in our prayer today as you find it. Whoop, right there, printed on our, our overhead. Take a moment, please. Read those words so they reside in your heart as we speak them with our lips. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for the lives of those who have gone before us. Bless the memories of your saints, and may we learn how to walk wisely from their examples of faith, dedication, worship, and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And so for this All Saints Sunday, we turn to the first. We will have two readings before we move to the Gospel. And our first lesson is taken from the book of Revelation, the seventh chapter. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be to our God, forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God, and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our second reading, we turn to John's first letter, the third chapter. John writes, See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Normally I would invite you to come forward, but I'm just going to invite those children who are here today and those children who are maybe tuned in via the video to uh, give a little extra attention if you're able at this moment. So, what have I got? A pumpkin, but not just any old pumpkin. What is this called? You guys do that this Halloween? Did you guys do a pumpkin? Yeah? Well, you know what? Halloween has come and gone, and, and you've got bags and bags of candy, and the dentist is smiling because you'll be seeing them later, but uh, these pumpkins just kind of get tossed out, generally speaking, hopefully into compost or something after uh, Halloween is over. But I thought, can the pumpkin 
teach us anything about faith? I think so. I think anything can teach us about faith if we, uh, we work hard enough at it or if we're open to the work of the Holy Spirit. So I thought, what can the pumpkin teach us about faith? Well, you know what? When we cry out to God, when we pray to God, when we speak to God, we say, Lord, open my mind. Open me up to your presence. If there is anything within me that is not right or good or useful, not I have to bag it all because I don't want to stick my hand in and get super duper ugly and gross, but there's stuff inside us that isn't right, that isn't what God wants us to, to think and to say and to be. And then we call on God and say, take that from me, remove it, take it out of my life, open my eyes. Now, if I'd have been a little more on the ball, I would have had the little chunks of pumpkin still there and I could have pulled them out a little more effective. But open my eyes to your presence in the world. Show me yourself day by day. Help me to be attentive to that. And as you do that, open my lips to sing your praise. May the words that I do speak, the attitudes that I do have, reflect your grace and your goodness. And then, Lord, that's a pretty tiny light, but put your light in me. I don't know if you can really make that out, but it, it's shining. It doesn't always shine as brightly as maybe we'd like it to be. But we say, put the light of Christ inside me so that all that I do shines forth in this world as a saint is called to shine so that others might see my good works and give glory to God. So, I don't know if you've still got an old pumpkin sitting around the house, but I hope when you go home, and you take a look at it, and anybody driving home today, and you see those pumpkins still sitting out on the step, I hope you see that you are called to have a pumpkin faith, that you are called to have your mind open, your eyes open, your lips open, and to let the light of Christ shine in and through you each and every day. May God make that so. We need some help with that. So let's pray. Can we come to God together? Gracious God, thank you for this opportunity to be in this place. Thank you for the opportunity to tune in via our website or YouTube. Thank you, above everything, for your goodness and your grace to us. You know the people we are, but you know the people you want us to be. So open us up in whatever way is needful and help us to shine with your light, now and always, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Probably won't show up real well on the video, but that's going to shine all service long. I'm going to invite you to rise. Uh, if you are prepared to lift your voice, but if not, lift your heart and let's say, We will glorify.
Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I would invite the congregation to be seated. Friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, I heard a story about a pastor and an organist who were sitting together and uh, they were preparing for worship uh, for the upcoming Sundays. And, and sometimes they like to listen to some different songs and musics to try to inspire them, maybe some new stuff they could pull in. Uh, and they heard a rendition of Yezu, Joy of Man's Desire. And you guys know that one by uh, Johann Sebastian Bach. Beautiful, beautiful piece, sonorous, lovely. And the pastor was so moved, he said, that's the, that song, I want that at my funeral. If I'm still here and you're still here, you got to play that song at my funeral. And the, and the organist said, well, pastor, then you can't die yet because I don't know that song. They had a little chuckle about that and, you know, kind of moved on to worship planning. Kind of forgot about it. The months kind of went by. And then it was Easter Sunday. And the pastor was getting himself all ready to uh, lead in that beautiful, wonderful worship service that is Easter, the celebration of Christ's rising from the dead. And as he's just about ready to go and lead worship, the organist comes running over, oh, excited and almost breathless and saying, Pastor, Pastor, I learned the song, You Can Die Now. <laughs> uh, wow. We've got three of our musicians here today, so I have to be very careful about any music that I say I want at my funeral because they might say, I know the one. Go ahead, Pastor. You can die. Well, that isn't the message that we proclaim in this place or with our faith. Not, you can die yet, you can live. That is what we proclaim on All Saints Sunday. That the saints are alive. Those who have gone before us, generation after generation, back into the mists of time, they are alive in God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. We heard that in Revelation. They surround the throne with a multitude that is more than can be counted from every tribe and every language. They live because He lives. We can give thanks for those who have gone before us. We can entrust them that every tear has been wiped from every eye. That they hunger no more. They thirst no more. That they live in peace and joy and the wonder that is the presence of God. That is part of what All Saints is all about. Celebrating those who have gone before us. Thinking about our, your own saints. Are you comfortable with that word be called a saint? You are a saint. I, I raised that at our lectionary uh, uh, gathering on Wednesday as we were reflecting upon these readings. I said, you know what? Uh, I often introduce myself, perhaps, to other people as, I'm Pastor Mark. But maybe I, I should say, I am Saint Pastor Mark. Oh man, now you're really going to tell me, Pastor, you can die now. Just <laughs> take it down a notch. But put that on your business card as you're going around, as you're going to school. How do you do? Uh, I'm St. Pilate. Well, probably not too likely to do that, right? We, we try to seek out humility, right? We, we think of saints as those, those people that, you know, they get their own windows. They get, they get colorful stained glass to show who they were and how great and holy and right and, and, and fantastic they were. Uh, and yeah, that's all well and good. And it's right for us to lift up various examples of faith. But it is also right to accept and to know that we are saints because of Jesus Christ. When God sees us, He sees the Son who shed His blood for us, 
so that we might be made holy and to grow into that holiness more and more with our life to be those pumpkins in this world and you know that reading I mean, maybe we've heard that a lot it comes up a lot in our scripture readings and worship and so i wanted to do something slightly different i want to give it to you i hope you'll indulge me and and, and stay with me because i want to read that passage from matthew the beatitudes from a, from a translation that's called the message some of you may be familiar with that some of you may have it i i'm a big eugene peterson fan not everyone is but i, I love the way he takes the ancient language and he tries to translate it into a more modern understanding. So just see if you can receive the words and see if it speaks to you a little bit about what it is to be a saint and how you might try to grow into that. And I'll give you the whole reading here, so please stay with me. When Jesus saw his ministry drawing huge crowds, he climbed up a hill. And those who were his apprentices, the committed ones, climbed with him. They came to a quiet place. And Jesus sat down and taught his climbing companions. This is what he said. You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there's more of God and his rule. You're blessed when you feel that you've lost what is most dear to you, because only then can you be embraced by the one who is most dear to you. You're blessed when you're content with who you are. No more, no less. That's the moment you find yourselves proud owners of everything that can be received. You're blessed when you work up a good appetite for God, because God is food and drink in the best meal you will ever have. You're blessed when you care. At the moment of being careful, you find yourself cared for. You're blessed when you get your inside world, your mind and your heart put right. Only then can you see God in the outside world. You're blessed when you show people how to cooperate instead of compete or fight. That's when you discover who you really are, that you are part of God's family. You're even blessed when your commitment to God provokes persecution. That persecution is meant to drive you deeper into God's kingdom. Not only that, count yourself blessed every time people put you down or throw you out or speak lies about you in order to discredit me. What this means is that the truth is too close for comfort. And they have to face it too. You can be glad when that happens. Give a cheer, even, that's not for Lutherans. For even they don't, because even, even, uh, even if they don't like it, I do. All of heaven is applauding. And know you're in good company, because my prophets and witnesses have always gotten into that kind of trouble. It's not easy to live up sainthood. Doesn't mean you gotta go out and make miracles. Doesn't mean you gotta go uh, and set the world on fire necessarily. What it means is that you need to just understand yourself before God as one who is a recipient of God's grace, one whom God loves. And then to go into that world and try to let that little light shine in. I was reading as I was preparing for this week how in Japan, they have such a very different culture to North America, and, and honor and respect is very, very important in that culture, and the way in which you uh, inter interact with other people. And they have this interesting little saying. It says, the hand can reach the itch. What that means is that you have the potential to help somebody else. You have the potential to alleviate something within somebody else. So first of all, let me ask you, What's your itch? What place in your life is hard to reach? No matter how much you twist or turn or do mental calisthenics, you can't seem to get there to alleviate that. Let the nail scarred hand reach that itch. Bring it to God through Jesus Christ. Bring it again and again as you may have to. His hand can reach that itch and release it. I don't know about you, but I find that hard to do sometimes. I like to think of myself as strong and, and capable, and I can get out there, and I can do what I need to do. But let me tell you, I'm getting weary. Can I confess that to you, brothers and sisters, in the reality of coronavirus? I call it the COVID crush. This constant state of being on alert, this constant state of being cautious, unsure, what's the future? That 
weighs on you, it weighs on me. Maybe, maybe you've got the secret to come and tell me what it is because there's a lot of that going around and there's a lot of that anxiety and, and that distress in our world. We're not immune to that. So be honest about that. Grow in your path of prayer so that you put yourself in the hands that can reach that itch and help you with that. And then be mindful of those around you. What are their edges? As you have started to experience some of that release and that, that joy that can actually come from resting in the presence of God, who has an itch that only you, perhaps, can reach by a kind word, a gentle touch, a moment of letting them know you are not alone in this. Let that light shine. I referenced a Japanese culture. I'm throwing a lot of symbols at you today, so if it's a lot, as always, go back to the video and, and try to take it in again. But uh, we are called not only to have pumpkin faith and not only to be the one, the hand that can reach the itch, but let me borrow from Australia. We are to be boomerangs. What do you think about that? Now, I've never been to Australia, but I've seen Crocodile Dundee, so I know a little bit about how that works, right? A boomerang is that curved stick, and when it's thrown properly, it will go out, but it will return again to the one that threw it, the one who sent it out. And that is a pretty good symbol, I think, of, of our life of faith. We come into this place to be nourished. We come by video, we come uh, with feet. Or we turn to scripture, we turn to devotional booklets, we commit ourselves to prayer, all those things so that we can rest in the love. We can come closer to the throne, even if we're not fully there like all the saints who have gone before us, but so that we might catch a whisper of that song that they are singing, glory and honor and power and might to the one who rules, to the one who, who owns this world, whose world this is. We rest in that, and then you know what God does? He picks us up and he says, now get out there in the world. And he tosses us. Kind of a rough image, but in a sense, he says, You are sent, go, and you go out in the world. But you're going to get out there and you're going to need to come back because you are going to live your faith, you're going to work hard, you're going to speak well, you're going to do the things you can, but you're going to stumble along the way and you're going to lose steam and you need to come back again to rest in that forgiveness again, to be nourished in word and fellowship and all the gifts that God has so that He can do it again and again. We have to boomerang in our faith and rest. God. I heard this lovely little uh, story about a young girl who was, for her very first time ever, going to assist in communion. And any of you who have ever done that, you know that sometimes you get a little nervous, you get a little worked up, right, about this is a momentous occasion. I'm going to be here offering Jesus to somebody in bread and wine. And so her parents were just, you know, like parents will do their helicopter and they're real nervous. And they're like, okay, so this is what you're going to given all the instructions and everything you've got to do, where you've got to stand up, and all of those things. And the little girl says, you know what? It's okay if I make a mistake. I'm in church. Some saint taught her that this is a place of grace. That the family she belongs to called the children of God practice that. And it's okay fall down. It's okay to mess up. God will not leave you there, but will extend the nail-scarred hand to lift you once again. I hope you have experienced that in this place and in other places, that you have those saints you can call to mind who, who taught you that, who showed you that. And I pray that you are blessing the world as you take that up as well, showing others the same mercy we have received. I gave you a lot today, so I'm going to give you one more. I'm on a roll. I can't stop. I got one last little thing, a poem that I think captures some of the Beatitudes that Jesus, Jesus fulfilled. We can't fulfill those things, but he has done it, that those who mourn can find themselves blessed. Those who seek to practice peace can be blessed. This says a little bit about what it is to be a person of faith, and it's just called, I'm a Christian. When I say, I am a Christian, I'm not shouting, I am saved. I'm whispering, I get lost. That's why I chose this way. When I say I am a Christian, I don't speak this with pride. I'm confessing that I stumble and need someone to be my guide. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not trying to be strong. I'm professing that I am weak and I need strength to carry on. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not bragging of success. 
I'm admitting that I failed and can never pay the debt. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not claiming to be perfect. My flaws are far too visible, but God believes I'm worth it. When I say I am a Christian, I still feel a sting of pain. I've shared my share of heartaches, and that's why I seek his name. When I say I am a Christian, I do not wish to judge. I don't have that authority. I only know I'm loved. May that love rest upon each and every one of us and help us to grow in our Savior. May God make it so. Amen. Blessed are they. This wonderful hymn to guide us deeper in our relationship with God. I invite the congregation to breathe, rise, and join together. Our hymn of the day.
song all the saints are singing in heaven, around the world and throughout all of time. We are blessed to be the people of God. Therefore, with humility and with boldness, we confess that faith in this place so that it may shine in the world as we join together using the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us join together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite the community to be seated. And I remind us, brothers and sisters, the gifts that God places in our hands are theirs for us to enjoy. They are pure grace offered by God to us, our time, our self, our talents, and our treasure. But then God sends us forth in the world with hands ready to be committed to the building of the kingdom. So thank you for the gift that you have offered to this church in so very many ways. And thank you for the gift that you are to God's world. May God continue to bless that giftedness. And in order that we may continue to walk in that blessedness, let us now commit ourselves to God in prayer. I invite you to be still in your body and in your spirit. God is in this place and ready to receive our prayers. Almighty God, Creator, Christ, and Spirit, you are the God of life and the God of blessing. You have made all that exists. How can we not offer you worship? In your Son, Jesus Christ, you offer your redeeming love to everyone in every situation. And so we are joy-filled today to be united by your Spirit in the community of your people. That community has stretched through countless generations, people we don't even know, and will continue on until you bring time to a close. May our thanks and praise join the voices of all your saints in heaven and on earth, who worship and adore you, singing and saying all oh, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power are yours, O God, this day, forever and ever. Receive these prayers. And we remember that your Son Jesus said, Blessed are the poor, so we pray today for those who find themselves on the margins of the economy. We put so much time and energy into making sure that uh, we have economic stability in our own lives and for our nation that uh, we don't always think about who are being trampled underneath it. There are many who experience anxiety, who find their life restricted because of low incomes and the insecurity that can bring. We pray, Lord, that you would challenge our nation and ourselves to be good stewards of your bounty, so that we would find ways to ensure that all receive from its goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you also said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. May that be our hunger and our thirst as we come into this place. We often go out, you send us into the world, filled but the times and the ways in which we live, the people we are around, it's true, it can make us feel empty. Help us to return to you again and again, to know that you are food and drink, that you are nourishment that will never be deplenished. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you blessed the peacemakers. And so we pray for everyone, anywhere, who works for peace and reconciliation in our world. For places where there is violence, persecution and chaos amongst nations or in homes, schools or workplaces. We pray that your transforming love would be enacted, spoken and known. Move us whenever possible in whatever way we, way we may be able to be mediators of your grace. To remember that we are recipients of peace to dwell in that first 
and then to find ways to offer that peace again as best as we are able. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you blessed those who mourn. And we think of those who uh, perhaps outwardly mourn, who have lost loved ones. We think on this All Saints Day of those who have gone before us and rest from their labors in your love. But we know that uh, there is much that can cause us to mourn. Many losses we experience in this life and in this world. We bring them to you. And we pray that you would hold them in your care and that you would respond as you know is best, as we name them now, both silently and aloud. Lord, we thank you for the lives of the saints that have gone before us. Especially parents, grandparents, friends, uncles, you name We also give thanks for the saints that are here among us who lead lives of faith. We ask you to uh, guide our newly elected provincial government, guide them by the Holy Spirit, and that they may make decisions according to your will. <coughs> Lord God, loving one, you know the cares of our hearts. We offer them to you, not only in this place, but help us to do that day by day. We rejoice even though it causes pain in our hearts as we think of those who have gone before us. In this past year, we remember Don Curry, Adele Sauter, Mary Marcotte, Winnie Hickey, Anne Hollywell, and more. We give thanks that they rest in your love and we, we look forward to that day when we will be reunited with them. We think of those who are ailing in body or in spirit, for Ron Polson, John Demke, Faye Crock, Ellen Reinwald, Anne Kuniger, Shirley Femsoggin, Dorothy Bornstrom. We rejoice. It is right for us to do that, for we are blessed. And so we rejoice with uh, Mike and Doreen Jerica, who welcomed a new member to their family, Mara Ione Pearl. It's a mouthful, but we pray that she will be uh, a load of love in their life. And we think also of Spencer and Casey Pitzel as they uh, prepare their home for uh, welcoming their first child. Bless them in that. God of the ages, your saints who have lived in faithful service now surround your throne. They offer you praise and worship night and day into eternity. And we pray that we, your saints here on earth, would join our voices and our lives together with theirs to proclaim your rule of righteousness, your rule of peace for all time. It has come to us through your Son, Jesus Christ. We lift these prayers to you in his holy name and join our hearts and voices in the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, beloved ones, I invite you to rise so that you may receive the blessing of God. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I would invite all the saints to be seated. Well, I thought maybe you're going to get a couple who wouldn't, and I'd have to go back and give you a whole other sermon. Yes, brothers and sisters, saints of God, I would ask if there are any announcements from our community which need to be lifted up at this time. Just as with the kingdom of God, all will be revealed in due time. Obviously, your church leadership has a very strong eye on uh, the realities of coronavirus, on what the government would have faith communities do. More information will continually come out. I hope my weekly letter is received and that I can try to uh, attach little bits of news from the community as to what is happening. But almost 100% certainly any sharing of food or fellowship in that way uh, will not happen. Things are different. Uh, we continue to try and live our way through this difference. And so don't make too many plans about the Advent Supper, but that will be uh, 
announced as we move through November. Next Sunday, uh, we will gather for worship in this place. We will tape our worship as we always do. But the, uh, the seven ELCIC congregation partnership is going to do a joint online worship service. Once a month, uh, we have committed to holding a joint worship service, and so they will all be online, and I think it's Redeemer who will be the host. So if you'd like to uh, take in a worship service in which they are all gathered, uh, just virtually, go to the ELC, Saskatoon ELCIC.com website, and you can find the appropriate links to worship. Worship with us, worship in that way too, and you will be doubly blessed on that day. And also, uh, November the 15th, while uh, we do not share uh, table fellowship in other ways, we will celebrate Holy Communion on that Sunday. Um, go back to the video, you can see the process we used, but if you would like to receive communion in worship, uh, come that Sunday, please RSVP in advance. If you would ever like to receive private communion, uh, I know that can be a little intimidating to call out or to say, hey pastor, I'd like to share uh, in that. I am more than willing and prepared to come and be with you in a safe way so that you can receive that, uh, that gift of God if you are unable to come into the worship on the 15th. Please call the office and let us know. I don't have any anniversaries to lift up from our community, but I do have some birthdays. J.C. Cardinal celebrates his birthday today. Jeanette Manti has it this coming week as well. Les Cormos, Marvin Sinclair, and boy did I flub up last Sunday. My father-in-law had his birthday last week and I didn't lift that up. So I'm getting it in. Rick Dobrow turned 75 last week and so I'm gonna lump him in with our other birthdays. I got you, Rick. Uh, and so blessings to him and to everyone who celebrates their birthday. Let's celebrate with them by singing. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friends. May Jesus bless you. Amen. With the community, please rise. We conclude our time of worship with our sending hymn, Shall We Gather at the River?
You know, I'm probably going to get myself in a little bit more trouble, so I just have to say one more thing. Rick never told me that I had to wish him a happy birthday, you know. In church, you can make mistakes. I made the mistake of uh, forgetting him, but he didn't say, hey, you forgot me. So I just want to let you know, Rick, I did remember. God bless you. God bless each and every one of you. Go forth into this world. Serve the Lord. Our worship is concluded. Go in peace, serving the Lord. Amen. Amen.